Hello everybody, how's it going? A uh, couple videos ago I did uh, slitting and drifting and just dem demoed that quickly on a small piece. So what I'd like to do today is uh, I do the same process but on a small hammer. So I've got this piece of, uh, this is uh, 38 millimeter or uh, inch and a half. So I'll, I'll use this smaller piece to make a, a smaller, uh, one of my uh, offset Japanese style hammers. You know, I normally use uh, 44 millimeter, uh, which is uh, about inch and three quarters. So, you know, you may think, well, the difference between them is only a quarter of an inch, so it's, it's got to be just, you know, just a little bit harder. But, you know, when you go up in size, even just a small amount, the mass becomes a lot more and it's exponentially harder. So just for today, I'd like to, you know, make a, a small hammer and, uh, you know, who knows, maybe I'll, uh, I'll do a giveaway on this video as well. But I think in this video, I'll just show the process of uh, forming the uh, hammer eye. So, yeah. And then uh, some other business <clears throat> I'd like to get to is that uh, the uh, comment section. Some comments, you know, I see them in notifications, but then they don't show up in the comment section. And there's no way, I can't figure out any way to make them move over to the comment section. So I don't know if that's on, the, on your end or on my end or what. You know, and there are also some comments that... Uh, you know, want need to be reviewed for whatever reason, and, and in the past it'd be I'd be able to approve them, but for some reason there's no box to check off approval. So, you know, uh, if you've made a comment and I've seen some good comments, I, I've seen them. Just don't, yeah. You know, but if it doesn't show up, yeah, what can I say? I think YouTube's got to sort that out. And then uh, another business is uh, uh, donations. You know, over the past few weeks, I've re received a few donations and some inc very generous, so I definitely have to make mention of those. So, uh, as usual, Bruce Butcher, thank you. Uh, and then I also received a donation from uh, someone who wanted to remain anonymous. Appreciate it. And, and a, 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 you know, I need to give a very big shout out to John Gregg. So, yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate that. Uh, helps keep the cameras rolling. So, yeah, thanks. And then the uh, final order of business before I get to forging is uh, my new vise. So I'll, uh, I'll, I've almost got that set up the way I want. So uh, I'll grab the camera and I'll come up close and show you that right now. Okay, so here's the uh, Made in England record vise that I picked up a few weeks ago. And what I did was I uh, altered the jaws to suit the way I like to use a vise. Uh, originally, not the removable jaws, but the... Uh, the actual vise here, it protruded in an L shape on both sides. <clears throat> and then this, uh, the removable jaws were more narrow, and they sat on that. But I don't like to have such a narrow jaw to lock things in. So uh, I took the vise to the machinist, and I had him mill both of those flat. And then I made these wider jaws. I've got them a little bit too high, but that won't matter too much. And... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's looking pretty good. And then I made a uh, stand. I'll come in, show you that. I made this uh, a laminated 2x12s, and I capped it. And then I might, on the very bottom, I might put in, put some, like, outriggers to stabilize it more. But, yeah, as it is right now, it's uh, just about ready to roll. Wanna, you want to take your time marking this stock because you know it's very crucial that you want to make sure you're in line when you're when you're uh, slitting or punching. Otherwise, it will make the uh, operation just so much harder. So that'll be, you know, it's probably hard for you to see, but that's the back end of the eye. Also for the, uh, uh, for donations, I need to mention another name. I need to mention uh, Philip Tuwalet-Stewa. Um, yeah, much appreciated. 
uh, and I just needed to figure out how to say his name. So, Tuwalet Stiwa, uh, who is a uh, uh, Hopi American Indian. Thank you, sir. So I'm also I'm also marking this with the uh, this uh, uh, style paint pen because this seems to hold up pretty good to heat. So I mean I've already got that little that little uh, counter punch mark there, you know, that I can rely on in case this disappears. But this also helps, and I'll just mark it, you know, straight across this way as well, like such. And then this is basically, you know, the back end, oops, you know, and then on the other side there. So, you know, uh, there's a few reasons why I'm using this smaller stock today for this. Uh, one of the reasons is because recently I was uh, working on something and I hammered in a, in a uh, kind of an awkward position and uh, some tendo, tend, uh, elbow tendonitis has come back and it's, it's pretty annoying. I'm used to it though, but I just wanted to take it a little easy if I, if I can. Uh, you know, and working on the stock that I use for the hammers I normally sell, the round stock, it's like, I, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's just a lot harder. And another reason is I'm thinking I'm you know, likely going to do this as a giveaway. So uh, this hammer will probably weigh about a pound and three quarters. So it'll be under a kilo, so I'll save a little bit on the shipping for that. Once it gets over a kilo, then the you know, price becomes a little bit more, but that's really neither here nor there. And then, uh, yeah, so basically that's, yeah, those are the reasons why. Also, I've got this piece of stock, so I'll figure what the heck, might as well. Uh, another thing at this point is you might want to, some people might want to maybe drill a hole to guide them. And on occasion, well, not on occasion, on some of, for some of my hammers, like my rectangular hammers, I do drill a pilot hole because they're about uh, two inches tall, and it's very difficult to maintain accuracy. Plus, removing that little bit of steel does help quite a bit. So, but uh, for a round style hammer, it's just going to try to uh, slit, punch, drift it. So, yeah, let me get it in the fire, and we'll see what happens. By the way, this steel is 1045 medium carbon steel. <clears throat> Without going too crazy, I'm yeah, just tapping this just to create a little bit of a flat. So when I start on this, then it won't want to roll. What I, I, I'm a guy who always changes what I'm doing depending on the day and how I feel. Sometimes I'll turn this half round this way and I'll put it in that rather than flatten it and this way it'll stay nice. You know, it will stay right in the crook of that and, uh, and, and won't roll this way or that way too much. But for this, I just wanted to gently, just gently create a little bit of a flat there. And I can still see my mark, just barely. Just barely. Okay. Okay, so, uh, you know, after flattening that just enough so it won't roll too much, I'll just take a, uh, a very gentle a very uh, slender tapered punch and then I'll, uh, I'll just more permanently mark either side just just taking my time just a few blows just so it's you know when I'm ready to really swing I, I'm on the money then. Dance 
is, uh, I've mentioned this previously, uh, like the slitter and punches and stuff I use are air hardening steel. This is, uh, this one is maybe D2, this is H13, either H13 or D2. They hold up really well, but if these, if they get too hot on the business end, you don't want to quench them right away. But if you pull it out, you know, just after a few blows like this, and you don't see color on that end, it's okay to just give it like just two second dip in water. And that seems to maintain it pretty well. So, just a quick tip. So I kind of want to just eyeball it again. Yeah, it looks like it's going okay. Try this more chunky monkey now. out and then work it with uh, with drifts and uh, with the proper size drift I'll bang it this I'll hammer it this way and that'll get the pole thicken the pole back out but boy this thing just whew, that's that's close to through so work it from this side and then Like I said, I've got the eye not exactly in line, so what I'm going to have to do is I'll probably I'll move on to some punches and I'll remove a little bit of material out of there, and then I'll straighten it all up when I work the pole. Thank you. 
probably just one, <clears throat> one more heat the other way now, and that should knock out some material. Because I didn't have, you know, I, I, I don't know why I preached this in the beginning, and then mine got a little off kilter, but <clears throat> what, uh, if this was all lined up, and then the slitter sliced perfectly through on each side, then you would just use a gradually wider punch or drift to open that up. But now I'm, I'm having to remove a little bit of material because it was a little bit off. So I'll, you know, I'll punch a little bit of a slug out with this blunter, this blunter punch. So just get yeah, one more heat from that side and that should pop out. material than I'd want to take out, but that's fine. And yeah, it seems to have the hole a little bit more lined up now. I've got <laughs> that bigger slitter left those marks on the end there, but I'm gonna have to also lengthen that a little so I should be able to take some of that out. So that shouldn't be a be an issue. And right now it looks nice and you know the hole's nice and straight right now. So yeah so now we'll just continue on to drift this hole out to our final size. And make sure, you know, this is, like I said, this is H13, so I don't see any color, so I can give it a quick quench in water. Just two seconds, fine. And that keeps it nice and sharp. I don't want to touch it because it's still really hot, but those edges are still pretty sharp. That's the key. When you want to remove material, a slug, the, the edges have to be very crisp. So one more, one more shot. And that's just set it aside. And if you do see color, let it, let it air cool, or let it cool until the point where you're at a black heat, then just touch it really quick in the water. So I mentioned this to, if anyone buys any of these top tools, I always mention that to them. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to this punch. This one is, this one's a little bit thicker, but this one is wider, a little bit wider, so I'll widen it up top, you know, front to back a little bit with this. And I, I know this needs to be dressed. I mean, that's a ridiculous amount of mushrooming on that. But uh, yeah, I'll get to that uh, sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to it. And this one here, the width is consistent, but the thickness, it's just a slight taper. It's just two millimeters thinner on the, on the, the bottom end. So the bottom, the last heat will be with, you know, when I have the piece with the, uh, the top up. And then the bottom end will just be just a little bit less wide, so when I wedge it, it'll split it open on the top. So. At this point, I still need a little bit to do a little bit more to widen that, just so that'll that'll fit in. There. decided that I'm going to do this as a giveaway, same as last time. Right now, I'm just about on maybe one, one or two more heats. This should just fit in where I can bang this final drift in. So I'll put this in the forge, let that heat in and heat. So, 
same deal as last time. You know, when I post this video, then uh, just if you, you know, the usual, you know, like, share, subscribe, comment, and if you leave a comment and do most of the above, I don't know if you do those other things or not, but if you could, if you do, great. Uh, you leave a comment, you'll be entered into the drawing. Uh, there are two people who I left out last time. Uh, I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but I'll enter them twice because I, I missed them on the last drawing. So just comment, and then uh, in next week's video, I'll do the drawing uh, for this hammer. I'll finish it out, you know, handle and all, be ready to go. So, yeah. Sometimes I just I just put just a little dash of a uh, little a little bit of WD-40 on the uh, on the final drift just because it's not tapered much and the, it really wants to stick in the hole. Now this smaller hammer it's not as high so I don't think I'll have as much trouble but with my normal round hammers and especially with my rectangular hammers boy this, this can be a bear to get out and I've got different techniques that I use but you know just a little bit of oil not much and don't don't obviously spray it on anything that's too hot as well you know and, and if you put too much on it'll flare up so just be really careful it just helps to loosen a little bit of that friction see yeah it came out pretty good right just a tiny bit more narrow on this bottom end than on the top end and that'll make all the world of difference when you want to keep the handle secure you know I've gone through a lot of different trial and error and over the years and this is you know a way that just it works really really well for me so thanks for watching and uh, 
I'll see you guys next week for the lucky draw. I'll do the drawing roughly six days after I upload this video. All comments within that period will count. Good luck.